Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I'm super excited to be taking a look at this video today. This time we are going to Swingtopia in Shanghai, China. Super excited to take a look at this competition. This one is called The Battle, which is really kind of like a a competition between two different art forms. We have hip hop on one side and we have Lindy Hop on the other side. Many of you all don't know, I've done both of these art forms for a total of over 31 years and both are incredibly interesting and fun. And I can't wait to give you guys my big, fat, bloated opinion on who I think is the winner of this competition. And maybe give you guys some of my comparative analysis on both of these art forms and what makes them similar and different. Let's get right into it. All right. I don't know what to expect, but something interesting. I don't know if they're going to beat box before or not. Let's see what happens. Okay, so they got swing music. Come on now. Yes. I love the competitive nature of both of these art forms. I think Lindy Hop is a bit more passive aggressive <laughs> than the hip hop dancers. You know, they're gonna do that silly stuff and get out there, but it's kind of like, hey, I'm being silly, but I'm still kind of trying to cut you. The hip hop guy just literally gets in your face. So I'm, I'm curious to see what's gonna go down. Oh, there we go. They got some pecking, some pecking taunting. Yes. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So he's not just hip hop. He's got some lyrical, I can tell a little bit. Some jazz. There we go. There we go. Yeah, he's got, <laughs> he's got that lyrical influence. I can see it. Yes. I know I can feel some pirouettes coming. I can feel it. Is he going to do it? I don't know. I don't know. He's got the work good. He's got it. See, it's as you can tell, the hip hop group See, or those who are doing more modern styles, it's a bit more aggressive with the upper body movements, as you can tell, because they're not attached to another body, and the, and the music influence wasn't really swinging, you know, implying a delay. So you can be a bit more aggressive when you're not like worried about ripping your partner's arm off. There we go. Yes! I like how they're using some soul, like a lot of James Brown influence. See, a lot of the hip hop samples back in the day were based on a lot of stuff from James Brown. So it's really interesting if music wouldn't have changed, where would they have gotten their samples? They probably would have got a lot of them from swing artists, which I think is really kind of an interesting thought. As you can see, when the swing dancers are dancing to like the soul music, it, it's, it's a, it's a little lazy, it's not as tight, it doesn't pack a punch. Now here come the B-Boys coming out! Here we go, they're dropping. Bop! Yes. All right, he's gonna come out. See, big difference, his partner is the floor. He's using the idea of rhythm, shapes, and momentum, but the part with the momentum is not with the body in many cases. They may use the body right there to do some still tricks. Even some tricks in the air, but most of his movement is based on using the floor, using the momentum with his own body. It looks a bit more fascinating because it's one person doing a lot of tricks. So 
I'm sure for those who don't understand how Lindy Hop works, it also looks Lindy Hop also looks fascinating because you don't know how it works. How can they improvise uh, and still you know work together as a as one body sharing energy at two different parts without getting hurt? So my scales have been ripped off, so both art forms are really fascinating to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now with this faster tempo, I'm curious to see how the B-Boys are going to react to this. Because this, you can do Charleston to these tempos. And typically a B-Boy is going to be much tighter than a Lindy Hopper. Now I'll take a Lindy Hopper with some... Uh, boogie woogie influence because they know how to pack a punch and they know how to stop on beat a lot of times um, because of the showmanship aspect of it but uh, we'll see here we go tap see what I mean it's very tight and it's very similar the, the main distinction between the two art forms is the upper body of the hip-hop group tends to move a lot more. There's lots of S's, there's lots of movements like that. It's not based on the lower half of his body, even though both do a lot of tricks um, that are identifiable with names, so. Both pretty impressive. I love it, I love it. Yeah, see what we got? <laughs> yes! See, look, notice the upper body. Notice how the arms are doing a lot more in a stationary way. Um, not having to use their partner, right? So a lot of their movements are very aggressive and flashy. <laughs> doing some swing outs. B-Boy's like, I don't understand how that works. Is it choreographed? Is it not? But I'll tell you this. If a B-Boy knows how to do some technique in Lindy Hop, there is no competition. They will blow away a Lindy Hopper. They just have way too much um, creativity and ingenuity. There we go. See how tight it is? Lock in, baby. Yes. See, a lot of those moves, those are classic jazz moves, and a lot of the lockers wouldn't even know that. You know, some of these moves were repeated in different generations with different names, but a lot of those... Uh, can be accredited to uh, the swing dancing community. I think that's fascinating. Yes. Now I want to see a, I want to see a Lindy Hopper come out. Oh, oh! I wanted to see a Lindy Hopper to that song come out and like do Lindy Hop or even solo jazz in a way where it amplifies that song. It's it's really hard to do that. It's really hard. Man, let me give you guys my thoughts on this. All right, guys, first off, I got to say big shout out to whoever organized this type of competition. I love when you see two different art forms come together and they're able to just kind of show their best in front of an audience. I, I think it's good for both arts. It's really, really fun. And I wish there was more um, there was more interaction like that within the dance communities as a whole and particularly with American art forms we don't really see a lot of that happen when we do see it uh, unfortunately it's usually like in this case like hip hoppers come to a Lindy Hoppers audience or a few Lindy Hoppers might go to a hip hop event and and when both of those situations happen it's all so surprising and so amazing to that audience because they're usually not used to seeing what they're seeing and so it's really hard to judge these kind of competitions because you're wanting to really judge them based on what they do 
Um, it, it's really more about how I feel about what I'm watching, like who impressed me the most. And if I'm going to look at this one, obviously, coming from, I came from hip hop. That was my dance background. So coming from hip hop into Lindy Hop, it, it's hard to compare the two in terms of entertainment value because hip hop is a bit more aggressive in the movements. And so even when you take a hip hop dancer and you make them dance to a lot of swing music, they're ahead of the beat just a little bit. They're, they're waiting to punch those moves and there's no accompanying snare that's there in the beat. It's a swung note, so they're not gonna get that same punch. So a lot of their movements might seem a little rushed. And of course, on the other end, when you take a swing dancer and they're dancing to hip hop music or any type of soul based music on, you know, like a funk bass where the, the beat isn't really swung, then it feels a, a little bit delayed. It seems like they're kind of lazy in their movements. And so on, for both sides, it, their music and their art form have weaknesses when you put them together. And so you, usually I never judge them on, you know, what happens when they dance to the other person's music because you can't really judge their art form fairly when they're not really in their element. It's like judging a fish trying to be a bird and a bird trying to be a fish. It doesn't work. Ultimately, I love both of these art forms. With the hip hop genre, I, I, was, I was around when it was in major transition um, from people dancing in the 80s on the floor, you know, using the mat. And for us, that was kind of like what we would say the Lindy Hop community, because Lindy Hoppers have jam circles, B-Boys have jam circles, we get out there and we you know, mess around and do our tricks. That was more similar to the Lindy Hop community. And then like in the late 80s, we started to have the influence of New Jack Swing. A lot of you all don't know what that is. That's when a couple of producers started sampling a lot of different music from the past and, it, and it, they were trying to tap into some type of American African roots. A lot of the dancers that influenced that were MC Hammer, um, you know, you had producers like um, Teddy Riley. And there was just so many different people that influenced that particular style. That took place in the late 80s and early 90s. And then, we, of course, we saw the maturation of that and it kind of went dark and everybody started to get more gangster in their movements. But the b-boy community kind of still cons was consistent. They kind of went underground a little bit. And so, you know, I was a part of both of those worlds at the same time. And by the time I got involved with Lindy Hop, you know, I was burned out on the hip hop community. It was, you know, it was choreographed. Like what happens after you can freestyle by yourself over and over and over at events? What happens when you just keep winning? What happens when everybody praises you when you get on stage for your choreographed performance? You could, you know you're gonna nail your performance because you've worked on it. Well, you get this insatiable desire for something more. And, and Lindy Hop was exactly what I needed as a, as a hip hopper because I was looking for that thing to allow me to further the art of improvisation and creativity, but with some type of constraints. We didn't have a lot of constraints in hip hop. It was all about, can you just do it to the music? And clearly in Lindy Hop, it's a little different. It's all about, can you share energy with a partner and not kill each other, but also remain respectable to a lot of the, the shapes of the past. And so I got the best of both worlds. I'm excited that I came from a hip hop community into the Lindy Hop community and I'll never go back. Like I, I love Lindy Hop so much more because I see that there are limits that are imposed on creativity, meaning that there's some basic structures that are there that you've got to work around uh, in concert with another person, not just by myself, because I know I can dance by myself, but the beauty of sharing that idea with another person and you both remaining vulnerable and you both creating together, I just think that adds so much to, to my life and to so many other people's lives. I will say, if it wasn't for hip hop, my Lindy hopping would be <laughs> dramatically uh, inferior. You know, it, it would it would not be where it is today. And that's because hip hop allows you to think outside of the box. It, it causes you to say, look, what can I do that someone else hasn't seen yet? Hip hop doesn't take the full credit for that. I think I think a lot of that came from the original swing dancers. It's all about adding something new that we haven't seen before. Most of my Lindy hop career is was founded on that idea is what can I do that something someone hasn't seen before and how do I add value to the legacy of this art form? So I encourage you, if you guys wanna check some of that stuff out, check out some of my free courses below. I got a whole bunch of courses um, that kind of show you some of my artistic uh, contributions to Lindy Hop and it'll help you kind of figure out what you wanna do, what you wanna uh, add to the art form. Now I will say, it's not like hip hop where you can just do it kind of whatever you want. 
you, you got to be respectful to the art form. There's a legacy in both art forms. So you don't want to just add anything into Lindy Hop and say, well, I demand it. And if you don't let me, I'm going to call your names. You don't want to do that. You want to say, well, what did they do in the past? The original dancers that I can add value to without taking anything away or undermining anything that came before. I think that's the beauty of Lindy Hop for me is, is it taught me that I'm part of a legacy. I'm not just this isolated vacuum, you know, doing whatever I want. Just keep that in mind. We're doing a lot of vintage dances, the Lindy Hop community and the hip hop community. So if they are dances that have been preserved, I encourage you be respectful for those art forms. Don't demand change on the art form. Just create your own art form. Don't cancel their art form because you don't like something. That's not how, the way to go. The best way to go is to do what they did, which is you add something new to the world of music and dance, or you just stop doing it and you go do something else that you like. What did you think about this competition? I really enjoyed it. That was really refreshing to see that. Oh, it was so good. Um, let me know in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing your thoughts about this. And again, big shout out to the organizer of this event for putting that type of competition together. I really enjoyed it. I think it's refreshing. I think it adds value to both uh, audiences and it encourages people to try something that's outside of their comfort zone. So with that said, I look forward to seeing your, your comments below. And if I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.